it's a pleasure to welcome El Medio Centro Maravilloso de los Yankees, Bernie Williams. Good to meet you, man. Great to meet you, too. Thank you so much for having me. So it's getting to that time of year. The weather is getting a little colder. Do, do you get a little antsy now? Do you feel the playoffs? Yeah, yeah. There is something in the back of my head. And, uh, you know, right there around the midsection that starts <laughs> kind of like bumbling little butterflies at this time of the year. There are so many of uh, great experiences that I had at this time of the year, you know, in my tenure as a Yankee. So it, it kind of like gets activated, you know, around this time every year. So, you know, what do you do to quench that? I guess you watch a lot of baseball or no baseball. No, we definitely try to stay involved and watch the team and, yeah. uh, you know, stay, you know, with, you know, you know I talk to uh, to Aaron Boone and uh, try to get a good rapport with the players, you right. know, get an opportunity to go to Yankee Stadium and see some games uh, and try to stay involved with the team. And uh, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's the best ticket in town at this time of the year. LeBron James um, said something along the lines the other day of, uh, I think he's 38 years old. He said, you know, in the NBA, I'm an old man, but in real life, I'm still a very young man. Did you find that your life began anew after you uh, retired? Well, in many respects, it was uh, a great time of my life because I still have the energy to pursue yeah. other things. Uh, it, it's not like I was, you know, like 60 or, you know, yeah. going seven. Uh, after retirement. So he gave me an opportunity to really pursue my other great passion in life, which is music and having a great time with that. But it, you know, you, you start missing some of the things that, you know, really filled your, you know, my years as a baseball player. But at the same time, you get a lot of the uh, things that I learned from my experience as a baseball player and try to put them into other aspects of my life. You know, all that whole thing about hard work and discipline and commitment and and uh, not dwelling on my mistakes and uh, just really put into work. Uh, I had been able to, you know, apply it to music and other things and uh, uh, has been very helpful. And philanthropy has always been a part of your game, no? Talk about some of the things that you're involved with. Well, yeah, you know, from the time that I, you know, was a baseball player, we really thought that uh, giving back to the community and, and being, uh, you know, Outside of the baseball field, you know, I was going to have a platform and uh, and uh, you know, people were going to listen, you know, whether I liked it or not, they were going to listen to what I had to say about different subjects. So we picked we picked things that were really close and dear to my heart. And one of these things is uh, interstitial lung disease, uh, this uh, disease that, that took my dad's life away in 2001. Since then, I've been teaming up with Bear Ringer Engelheim on a campaign to try to raise awareness about interstitial lung disease. He had, my father died from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is one of uh, around 200 of these interstitial lung diseases, which is basically a scarring of the lung tissue that really makes it difficult to breathe. And uh, the symptoms, uh, you know, could be sort of taken, you know, from other, uh, you know, things, you know, like asthma and COPD and bronchitis, and right. it could be really difficult to, to uh, determine whether or not you have interstitial lung disease. So that's probably one of the biggest uh, components of, you know, why I try to do what I have to do, because it took me and my family about five years to get my father diagnosed with interstitial lung disease. And then around that time, we couldn't do much uh, to improve the quality of his life. But there's a lot more information nowadays, and uh, we're trying to get all that information out for people that, that are suffering from, from these diseases so they can get better educated about it. And of course, uh, like a lot of things, early detection is critical. So if you're feeling something, get it checked, yeah? That is correct, you know. And uh, some of these symptoms, you know, in, my, in our particular case was my dad started feeling uh, fatigue. Uh, he had this dry cough that, you know, would never go away. Uh, and uh, you started really deteriorating to the point that we really needed to get him to the doctor uh, to try to get some answers, you know, to our questions. And uh, like you said, early detection is, uh, is very important. Your musical career uh, really kind of uh, took off after or towards the end of, of your major league career. You're classically trained. Who are your influences musically? 
Well, I, I'm kind of glad you asked that question because I my actually my background in music goes back to my high school years. I was wow. able to uh, very blessed to be part of a, 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 a school for music uh, in Puerto Rico, La Escuela Libre de Música. Mm -hmm. uh, was my alma mater I, as, as far as high school. We, uh, I started playing guitar and learning how to, you know, uh, learning music and theory and harmony and uh, having this great connection with music at a very young age. It really uh, helped me, you know, in other aspects of my life, including sports, uh, trying to make those connections. And, uh, you know, I've been playing guitars since I was eight years old. And uh, now, uh, you know, after graduating from that uh, performing arts high school, I had my career with uh, with the New York Yankees. And uh, after that, I was able to audition for the Manhattan School of Music. And they took me in seven years after I retired. And I uh, came out with a degree in jazz performance out of the Manhattan ah. School of Music. So like they say in New York now, I'm just another cat looking for a gig. <laughs> but it has, been great. it has been great, you know, playing in New York and, and uh, expanding, you know, this... Uh, great musical experience everywhere. We are in Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, would you say that your music has um, Latin influences? Yes, my music has great Latin influences. I grew up listening to the boleros and uh, especially in Christmas time, all the aguinaldos and all this uh, great traditional Puerto Rican music. That wow. is part of my essence, you know. Uh, my all my bands, they all have to have the congas and the bongos and the guidos and the timbales because that is uh, a very important part of the music that I grew up listening to and part of the music that I try to uh, convey out there to the you know to the people. It was already a, a big influence while you were playing, but Latinos in baseball, I mean, they are uh, just dominant, no? Yes, I think that we have a, a great advantage. You know, we can play baseball all year round, yeah. Latin countries. Uh, but I mean, for myself and I think many of, of my fellow Puerto Rican uh, uh, teammates and, uh, you know, baseball players, you know, we all kind of try to emulate the, the great Roberto Clemente. Yeah. And uh, he was our inspiration, you know, not only for what he did on the field, but especially what he did off the field, uh, his tragic uh, death. Uh, trying to help people, you know, in an, uh, in an earthquake in Nicaragua uh, made him, you know, he, he was a, a great hero for us, but it, it really just catapulted him into like the, you know, the standard of yeah. what every uh, player, Latin player at least, is measured against, you know, in their community, especially in their in their community work, you know, you know, outside of the field. I would say that you're in favor of retiring number 21, yeah? Absolutely. No yeah. doubt about that. Yeah. They should have done it a lot earlier. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I meant to always ask, well, I was always curious about why you wore number 51. Is there a, is there a, a story behind 51? There's not really that much of a story. I think I, as I was a rookie coming into the big leagues, uh, you're kind of like uh, on the mercy of the clubhouse yeah. manager. He yeah. sees you as a player and he says, hey, this is the number you're going to wear. And you're going to like it. And you're going to say, yes, sir. So at that time, uh, they, uh, the, the, uh, the, the equipment manager of the New York Yankees uh, really, re uh, I, he said that I reminded him of another player, uh, Willie McGee. You know, he ended oh, up yeah. playing the Yankees and he got traded and he made, you know, a lot of his great years with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals yeah. And he used to wear number 51. So he said, you're going to wear number 51 because it hasn't been retired. And uh, you're going to wear that number. And I said, yeah, as long as I have a number in the team, it doesn't matter what number it is. You know, I'd love it. I always wonder about Puerto Rican players who end up wearing 51 if they're uh, talking about wanting to see Puerto Rico as the 51st state. That's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had that question asked many times, but it wasn't any any ulterior motive. It was just a number that was given to me, at, you know, when I was a young player. And I actually had an opportunity to change, uh, to switch numbers. Uh, the last single digit number in the team was number six. And I was there and I had an opportunity to wear number six. Uh, and I just decided to remain with 51. Uh, figured that was a number that, you know, they gave me. And it was, you know, uh, the one that I kind of stuck with, but uh, Joe Torrey, our old uh, manager, 
uh, ended up wearing number six. And now all those numbers are retired, so there's no chance for anybody else to wear them. Before I let you go, you know, it is uh, postseason time. Um, what do you think the Yankees' chances are? And, Mets fan, what do you think the Mets' chances are? Well, I tell you what, I mean, I think at the beginning of the of the season, I mean, things were, you know, kind of like up and down. Uh, and uh, but I think both teams, you know, in the last, you know, I don't know, four to six weeks have made tremendous uh, advantages, you know, moves towards, you know, trying to get in the postseason, especially the Mets. You know, they have had a great run. I think, you know, the Yankees expectations are always very high. And I think, you know, they have a. Uh, uh, now with the addition of Soto in that lineup, yeah, they have a great chance to 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 make a great advance into this postseason. Especially playing in Yankee Stadium, you know those fans are the greatest in the world, and they will make a difference, you know, and, and that home field advantage. So uh, I see I I see them doing well. I think they have the the team and and the uh, the personnel to have a great postseason, and I'm always rooting for them. He's a Yankee that a Mets fan could get behind. Bernie Williams, good to meet you, man. Thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Thank you so much for having me.